Charlotte. Why does the compass needle point north? Is it because it's attracted to it? To it? Did you mean the same it there? Because it no. usually okay. Please. Okay, we have a pole on the magnets which is attracted to a pole on the Earth. Right now, there is a magnetic field right here and it's pointed north. It's actually pointed slightly down because as you get farther away from the equator, at the equator is actually pointed horizontally. Right here, it's actually pointed slightly down. Can you see it? It's pointed right, it's like right there. There's another line right here. Oh, I'm sorry. There's another line right here. Everybody see it? Rudberg sees it, she not there. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> no, you do not see it. There is a magnetic field that exists around the Earth caused by the moving, well, we're pretty sure, caused by the moving core, which creates a dynamo. We have this all this metal that's molten and it's moving very quickly in the core, and we think it creates this magnetic field that we have around the Earth. Okay, so let's walk our way through some of this stuff, figuring out magnetic fields, etc. This is a magnet with a north and a south pole. We have the magnetic north, you can see the red here is the north pole of the compass and it's pointed toward the south pole exactly because like poles repel and unlike poles attract in this particular case you have the unlike pole being attracted to the south, so the north being attracted to the south and you can see the magnetic field diagram shown right here. Note the similarities between this and the electric field diagram for a positive and a negative charge. So we already have experience with various fields and in this particular case, there are a lot of similarities between the magnetic field and the electric field. They're clearly not the same, but there are a lot of similarities, and you can see those in those two diagrams. I do want to take a moment and read from your textbook. I know you love it when I read from your textbook. This is my second time for what I understand, what I remember. You don't need to get it out. I'll just read it to you. Electric charges differ from magnetic poles in that they can be isolated while magnetic poles cannot. In fact, no matter how many times a permanent magnet is cut, each piece always has a north and a south pole. Thus, magnetic poles always occur in pairs. I want you to listen again and realize that they've actually drawn a conclusion which is impossible to draw from what the statement says, so listen carefully. Electric charges differ from magnetic poles in that they can be isolated while magnetic poles cannot. In fact, no matter how many times a permanent magnet is cut, each piece always has a north pole and a south pole. Thus, magnetic poles always occur in pairs. What they're saying is this. Whenever we take a magnet that has a north and a south pole, for example, this guy. And we break it, which some of my AP students did for me. We then have a north and a south pole here and a north and a south pole here. And every time we've done that, we've created a north and a south pole. And then their last sentence, thus magnetic poles always occur in pairs. Well, we don't have one. Magnets have always occurred in pairs. Can you prove something does not exist? No. no. They drew the conclusion. They said, well, every time we've done it, we've always gotten a north and a south pole. Therefore, it's always going to occur. Is that true? The only thing we can say from there is that Thus, a magnetic monopole has never been found. We can't say it doesn't exist. We don't know that it doesn't exist. All we know at this point is that we've never found one. So, you should be aware that magnetic poles have never been found. But, you might find one someday lying next to a room temperature superconductor. They'll just be there together. Either that or they might be the same thing. Wouldn't that be fun? All right. So be careful what you conclude. You cannot prove something does not exist, which the book claims they did. All right, uh, let's see, we've done that. Oh, I want to do this part now. Okay, 
So over here, I have a magnet. This magnet is representing the, uh, the magnetic uh, field of the Earth. You can see the Earth is represented right there. I have a compass. When I take this compass and I place it right here, you will be able to see, and you can kind of see a little bit better than before. You can see the compass needle. You can't see which, uh, which one's red, uh, unfortunately, but the red one is pointed right here. This represents you standing at the equator. If you're standing at the equator and you're holding a compass, that compass is pointed north. Everybody see that? If we walk up a little bit to maybe, eh, look, it's kind of where we are. There it is. It's still pointing northward. This time you can actually see it's pointed a little bit slanted down. And as we walk around the planet, you can actually see that we create, you can see the magnetic field that is create, that is exists around the planet. All of these are pointed, oh, that's about, I'll move a little bit. All of these are pointed in this particular direction, as you can see here, we'll eliminate slightly different. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see it. But anyway, we'll do my back. So you can actually see this one's pointed right here, and these are all actually pointed in that particular direction. That is not overly really helpful. Cool. Okay. <laughs> oh. So, but I'm confused a minute. Because we said that, I'm sorry, Charlotte <coughs> said that the north pole of the compass was pointed northward, right? Okay, but I thought that unlike poles attracted. I thought this was the North Pole, and yet we have the North Pole of the compass pointing toward the North Pole of the planet. Headlight. The compass is meant to indicate the direction of North, so they're labeled opposite what they're actually charged. Incorrect. Compasses are correctly labeled. I mean, they're labeled so that they point. True. They are correctly labeled as that is the north pole of the compass, and the north pole of the compass points in the correct direction with the magnetic field, which it should. Learner. The magnetic south pole is actually around the um, north pole of the um, Earth, and the magnetic north pole is around the <coughs> actual south pole of the Earth. So I'll try to summarize that, but yes. <laughs> This is what you're looking at. Each of the compass needles points toward the north pole of the planet, which is more specifically called geographic north. It turns out that what you have called north all your lives is not magnetic north, it's actually magnetic south. Because the magnetic South Pole is very close to the geographic North Pole, and the magnetic North Pole is very close to the geographic South Pole. Unfortunately, it is flipped upside down relative to the way that you would think it is. You think of geographic, and the compass works on magnetic North. In fact, magnetic South and North Pole are not located right where geographic now North and South Pole are. They are offset slightly, and they are not consistent. They are not in the same location all the time. They're moving around. If you think about it, it's, it's caused by this molten core of the planet that's moving around. That's not going to be exactly consistent either. So it does not stay in the same place. In fact, it's changed. Magnetic north and south have switched in our history. We have fossil records of uh, fossils that are all pointed in one direction during one century, and then a little while later, they're actually pointed the opposite direction. Because the magnetic field of the magnetic poles of the planet have switched. And it's been estimated that they've switched approximately every 300,000 years. But unfortunately, it's been almost 800,000 years since the last time they switched. Which means, we're due for a switch. That would be interesting. Yes, it would be very interesting. I, I, I was going to say I look forward to it. I'm interested, I guess I would say, in what would happen if it were to happen. Especially if it were to happen gradually, as opposed to all of a sudden. Although the whole thing would be interesting. I don't know. So we don't fully understand why it would switch, which is part of the problem. 
I love it when we don't understand something.